Welcome back, it is Thursday and that means Acting Analysis Finding Meters and today I'm going to talk about episode 2 of season 1 of Succession. I just finished season 2, it was amazing, I loved it. So much material to talk about, but let's dive into episode 2 right now. First, there was this sequence where Greg is trying to comfort or say some comforting words to the wife of Logan who just had a stroke. And it's this moment here. She doesn't really react to all of the things that he says. He's kind of leaning in, he's trying to say something, but you can see that she's not engaging, she's not really looking at him, she has enough problems. And this is the moment that I want to talk about here, is that when he gets up, it's interesting too, that division here, but as he gets up, look at what she does here, how she recoils, straightens up, adjusts her hands. It's a subtle thing here. And look at her. She doesn't look at him, but she notices that, oh boy, it was out of her peripheral vision here. She can tell he's getting up and then she tenses up. She kind of looks away. He has a comforting touch here. She just looks at it. There's no change in her hands. Doesn't want to engage. So I want to just point that out just because it's when you have multiple characters, let's just say two, and whatever that character is doing, make sure that your other character is always aware of it, is either reacting in terms of visually looking at things or recoiling or audio wise when they might say something. But it's always a thing of when you have two characters, it's pretend this character is doing something, this character will react. If that person says something, they will listen and react. There's always acting is reacting. So there's always something going on when any character is doing anything. Make sure that whatever movement happens with this character here, that it relates to this. Now, that doesn't mean that your character always have to move around <laughs> when this character is moving. I'm saying that if this character has a sudden move or addresses this person with whatever line, but if there's anything that this character does that this character would technically be aware of, I will make sure that in your animation, the character is reacting to that. And that can be subtle, that can be just a bit of a look away, it can be actually addressing and looking at it. It's the same thing when I talk about props where something, there's a big sound and then if your character doesn't have a wins or looks or reacts to that, it just feels weird. When the character is not aware of the environment, and the environment can include a character or not, when they're not aware of that, then it just makes it kind of fake and just kind of copy pasted in that scene. And also if you have a character be aware of the surroundings, be it environments or actors or whatever, it adds more believability to the world, like that character is part of that world, but it also offers you more ideas and acting choices because of that. And I'm gonna stay with her, where she has almost kind of the same reaction, but I like this as an entrance too. So watch this, this is your setup, imagine this is your scene. So this sets the stage, she's leaning towards the character, she's concerned, and now you have Tom coming in here. <laughs> I love this. Comes in slightly, you know, not sneaking, but kind of light on the foot, not too disturbed. He's kind of whispering. He goes knock knock and he brings her the coffee. Now she looks at him again. She's aware of my well, obviously he's talking to her, but she actually makes the effort of looking. She leans towards him to grab the coffee. You can see that he just leans over using, you know, the pivot of this leg here. Just kind of like they're not fully engaging together. There's a bit, still a bit of a, a rift between the two, but he gives her the coffee and then steps away. And you can see she looks away. He steps away and then I love this. He goes back a bit, he waits, like, should I actually get in? All right, let me make the move. And then now when he gets in, look at her. She realizes, oh, he's coming, mm, okay. Leans away and watch this, leans more away. And you can see this, he gets closer to make his move to say something and she doesn't really like that and doesn't really engage. So this goes back to really having your character react to whatever's going on there. And you can make this very subtle where it's like, hmm, I guess she doesn't really like him or she doesn't want to engage at this point. But it's a great opportunity for you when you have multiple characters to add those subtle things where if someone says, hey, how are you doing? It's like, hey, how are you doing? And you lean in. Or is it, yeah, well, how are you doing? And then you lean back. All those little body cues, that body language helps give your shots and the, the character acting just more layers that you can imply some subtext, there's just so much you can do. So when you have multiple characters and the sets and everything, like I said, use that to your advantage. You can use that to add more subtle cues where she could be maybe take a step then behind the chair to add a physical division between the two. I mean, of course, this scene would also work in an empty room. So when he steps close and she kind of steps away, the body language is clear too. But with an extra set and the environment and just kind of the context of that, you can use all that to kind of push those feelings more potentially. This one was interesting because this is part of her character. This is just something that she does at this point. 
but you can bring this all the way back to an animation exercise. And this is one of the reasons why I do this, where, I mean, this show to me has a lot of really great acting, a lot of great subtle acting, but it's also a lot of stuff that's context-based as part of the show. Some stuff that's kind of hard to replicate in animation if it's just for a shot. So as always in my act analysis, I look at elements of what can I take out of this moment where you can apply this to your exercise, to your shot in class. Because I, because I'm assuming a lot of hopefully students are watching this or people are interested in, in lessons or kind of ideas and in, in how to take the shots further. So this to me is, this is something that's within the shot, within the scene, within the character in the show. But technically what she does here is a sit down assignment. Now, how can you make this more interesting is by instead of just walking around and sitting down, she has that, the mechanics of putting her leg over there, the other one sliding down that bounce so you can sell the weight of this. And then she has a little adjustment and lays down like that. Now, again, this tells us something about this character, the, the, the contrast between the two, the whole family with the brothers. I mean, this helps us within the show. But again, this is just a separate moment of, hmm, this is an interesting way of sitting down. Now, on top of that, let's pretend you're not focusing on a sit down and you had some lip sync and they were talking or whatever. And this is something where you can end the scene. If you look at him, there's no line. He doesn't say anything, but he has this moment of, and, Good. <laughs> I love this. It's great. So imagine you had a lip sync, whatever it is, right? Whatever's going on in the scene, this is a way to end the scene where a third character, or maybe they were talking, but this is how he ends the scene with that. And this goes back to what I said in previous clips where just because your lip sync ends doesn't mean that your shot ends, right? You can always add something at the end, add a little button, something that character does that either changes the whole mood of the shot or just something where you add more meaning to it or something. So whatever you want to do, but it's tricky when your audio actually ends and it's only silence. It's kind of a bit of a harsh stop and then you add more acting. It's kind of sometimes, I don't know, it's very subjective, but it kind of is weird to me. So if you have extra ambient sound or room noise or anything, maybe add that to kind of make it more seamless. But I just like the idea of adding your own spin to it. Because again, when you have your lip sync, you're tied to that rhythm. You're tied to that content and so on and so on. So when you have pauses or you add something at the end, you can make it your own. You make it more original and you make it more creative. And it's a more of a reflection of your personality and your skill set that you want to highlight in your reel and to get a job and so on and so on. Speaking of adding more to a scene, this is something that's commonly used in movies, but you have this thing of someone looking in the mirror. For some reason, it reminds me of The Devil's Advocate with Keanu Reeves doing his, his smile there. But you have her, she gives that, yeah, I'm fine. But then it's immediately on the cup by this with that throw. That's not a nice throw. She's angry. She's frustrated. And you can see right away the mood has changed. And you can see this too as she walks out. Like this is her actual mood. But then she has that moment of, okay, well, I got to pretend. I got to be nice. I got to go outside. It's just a great little moment. And this is something for you where you can just, again, add different layers of emotions, just the subtext of it. Just, you can just add more to your shot. This one I thought was really interesting where he proposes and then she says, this is not the right moment. And he goes, mm, okay, yeah, I understand it was the wrong moment. And we, we tilt down to see this. And I love his little interaction with the ring, but it's mainly this. Watch how he closes it. It's just that. It's a that little bit of a, mm, it's very, to be careful not make too much noise and he still, still wants to really take care of it and this this is something where i talk to the students about every single thing in your shot has meaning so if you have a blink a blink like this tells us something about the character but the blink where you hold eyes and they're close for a couple frames that tells us something else about the state of mind of the character so one frame close two frame close three frame close all of that changes the meaning and the emotion and how we as the viewer see the character so every single thing has meaning and it's not ready for you as an animator then tell us something about the character so if he's frustrated you can just do like a ah, like a quick close and a snap of the box because he's frustrated but she said no or you can do that that very delicate closing and that tells us something else that he is disappointed but he still cares or no, i don't i don't know if he cares but at least he's just a bit he's not angry let's put it this way at least it tells us he's not frustrated and closing this in an angry way. So every single move, everything that you do with or without a prop tells us something about the character. So just if you can, and now it's tricky that when you start animating, you gotta worry about arcs and pops and just general mechanics. But once you kind of pass that and you're more comfortable with the animation, think about then timing and how timing tells us something about the character, the emotions, the way, just everything. You are in control of that. So really use that to tell the audience, this is how my character feels. 
Now, actually continuing in this sequence is that even though she said no, she says, well, but you know, when you're going to propose again in the appropriate time, I'm going to say yes. And he goes, yes, yes. And I love this. He's so cute in that reaction. And I love this here. I love how he runs forward and he has those fist pumps. Look at this. I love that. He got hand pose here. He's so ready as he runs. He does, he does this. Yeah, 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 look at that. You got the fist pump. She's getting ready for this. Oh, and then he grabs her and lifts her up. So A, it's a really cute character moment, like the very interesting way and different ways of showing how he excited he is. Look at this, like the beautiful lines there and how it goes in there. And to bring it back to just a, an animation thing is this is your weight assignment, right? So imagine you go to class and the teacher says, homework, weight assignment. Well, okay, well, I don't wanna make it just look like an exercise. I wanna make this character driven and kind of like a shot. So it looks like it's something taken out of a movie or a TV show, or whatever. So I'm gonna use the opportunity to do a weight lift because I'm excited and I wanna grab whatever I'm excited about and lift this up. And this could be an object, this could be a character, but I thought this was a cute little thing of taking an exercise and making it more character driven. And you can see this here, as he lifts her up, and that'd be too long. And it's a cute contrast too of all that excitement, lots of movement, contrast, 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 and, and lots of fast timing, and then calming this down with just a kiss, and then that. It's cute. This would be a really cute shot. And speaking of contrast, he has a very specific way of moving around and sitting in weird ways in this show. I just love the acting choice that he has. But in this case, he's always very tense. He's not always so comfortable. And it's, it's a great display here. And I mean, there's more stuff here, but already this, how straight he is. And he always has those lines, even how he is like this. And you can see this here, he straightens up, right? Straightens up, bam, a bit more tense, like he sees an opportunity there and he's a bit more, I would say nervous, but definitely more tense about what could happen. And then look at how he is standing there, how he's leaning against it, those expressions. And then you can see it again here, very straight while he is just leaning with a curve. And even just very quick and fast, tense moments there. And he goes, ah, okay. And he's kind of adjusting his little cuff here. And then same thing again here, where he just has <laughs> that little thing, I love this. He has that little pose on his, with holding his hands in and just that. It was brooch. Like, you know, he's, there's something where he just like, wait, what happened? And I love that, just that choice of just bringing it out those fingers. But again, it's tense, it's direct, very sharp lines, while he has all of that going on here. It's like, yeah, come on, come on. All the way down to here where they actually agree on things. And he's still so straight. And you can see if you go back here, just a constant lean. So the reason why I'm saying this, besides this being awesome and I love this, it's just, again, if you have multiple characters, make them different, give them contrast. This could be in posture or just gestures and poses and fingers, facial expressions, and use that to your advantage. Where again, when you have multiple characters, you wanna make it more interesting and change the scale, the outfits, the look, but the movements, the posing, the posture. Unless, of course, you want every character to be the same, and then suddenly one character changes, and that the, the sameness, and now one character changing, that contrast makes it more interesting, but that contrast would only work if all the characters are the same. But the main thing is contrast, to so use contrast to your advantage in order to highlight emotions and thought process and all that good stuff that you can put into your shots. And speaking of good stuff, if you think that this was cool and interesting, ah, oh, that's really neat, I wanna take this and put that into my shots, you know I have a workshop, you can sign up at any time. We can talk together about all your shots and implementing all of this to make your shots better. So link in the description, you can sign up at any time. But that's it for me. If you're still watching, as always, thank you so much. And if you don't wanna miss anything that I upload, you can subscribe if you want to. Hit that bell button to get all the notifications. You know the YouTube spiel. But that's it for me. Episode two, we're gonna move on to episode three and more. There's so much to cover. But until then, I will see you in my next clip.